Folks, you can head on over to the front page of TFNN, right under the newsletter tab, the Tiger Forex Report. Teddy puts that out. New issues every Monday morning. Uh, updates throughout the week when warranted. Only $97 comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And don't forget, right under the services tab, he's got a couple of great webinars out here, capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. We were just talking a little options, uh, if you're into options. And then Japanese candlestick patterns, stock and option strategies. With Teddy, both of those just 97 seven dollars check those out and let's get into it teddy kegstack good morning good morning tommy so we had jackson hole last friday um the market reacting a bit to that seems like chairman powell uh might be ready for some cuts coming down the line later in september where we go from there is anybody's guess but why don't if we can kick it off maybe with the dollar we got a little bit of dollar strength you know not nothing dramatic from the moves that we've had recently um but what do you think about kind of the dollar index i mean a little bit of a bounce today you know no huge move on yields but a little bit of a bounce counter to what we've been doing um where do you want to kick things off teddy uh, well, you got to remember, yesterday was the lowest low we've seen in the dollar index in over four months. So uh, an update today right now is not really much of a big deal. Um, <clears throat> granted, it is a very nice up move as far as on a daily basis today, this morning. Um, and it's really, I think, just been a profit-taking move. I started yesterday with a little bit of a leaking trade after it set the bottom. And then basically has been grinding higher as we uh, headed into uh, today, you know. So I think it should be viewed as a profit-taking move. If you look at the 10-year and the 30-year, they're relatively flat. They're, if they're wedging, you know, I think they're going to be pretty much staying where they're at in a range trade until after we get through with the uh, next Fed meeting. I mean, we'll probably see a couple spikes depending on the numbers that come out, especially unemployment next week. If unemployment comes out higher, you would I would assume that you're going to see the 10-year and the 30-year making new uh, daily highs and going into that number. As far as how far they will go with those highs, I wouldn't expect very much. I just think you'll be you know, basically just piercing the upper uh, boundary of the range and then coming back into it until, like once again, I said, until we have a Fed meeting and actually have a rate decision. Um, I think the number is crucial, and it'll be interesting, especially if unemployment surprises to the downside and becomes even remotely well, I wouldn't say a little bit lower, but if it's significantly lower off the forecast, I would say that would be something that could put a hold on the um, Fed's actually uh, cutting rates. That would be something to look out for. Um, but right now, as far as the dollar index, I think you're just looking at a profit-taking move. As far as how far can you go, you know, I mean, if you look at the euro right now, um, but we'll get to the yen. That's something that we probably should get a little bit of a topic on today. Um, but if you're if you're looking at the euro right now, you, you have basically a double top that came in from Friday into Monday. Uh, you know, so Tuesday's trade was not much of a big deal, you know, and now today we have a obviously a nice range for the day and we're, ho we're hovering on the lows. But you got to remember the slope of the euro US dollar trading, just like the slope of the dollar index has been very steep over the last three to four weeks. I, I'm right now I'm saying right now you have to really view it as a profit taking move right now. There's no real fundamental reason to think that we're having any type of trend reversal, you know, and I mean, I always say don't yeah. ever try and pick a top or a bottom, especially like we just bottomed out in the dollar index yesterday. Today, one day does not a trend make. Sure. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. You know, you look at on a five minute chart, I pull it up and I'm like, man, that's quite a move on the dollar from where we were at the close yesterday to where we kick things off today. You put it on a daily and you just go back to where we were what the beginning of yeah july and yeah you can barely see a pop in that market it's been red lower lows and lower highs across the board um over that period of time pretty dramatic let's jump to the yen let's do it i was taking a look at the yen sure. everything moving a little bit today like you mentioned off of kind of where we've been but what do you think about the yen action Okay, the yen right now, I like it. It's uh, hovering just below our monthly directional pivot level, right around 145.09. Uh, um, I think that if we can get a close above that, that would be significant in that the short-term trend should be set, not getting bullish, but I think you can see a, a very positive to neutral um, bias that will be coming into the U.S. dollar yen. Um, it's, until we ray or cut rates, there's a good chance that we could see a spike up towards that 150 level, especially if the numbers, like for instance, if unemployment comes out better than expected and if we have some other economic numbers over the next couple of weeks to start to go against the trend that the Fed is looking for, I think you could see a spike in the U.S. dollar yen getting above 150.
I think is going to be very difficult with a uh, rate cut uh, looming. Now, should the Fed not cut rates next month, then you may see that the yen actually get a shot up towards that 152 area because if they don't cut rates in September, what's the market going to do? It's going to definitely probably go and lean towards the other direction until there's enough fundamental bias leaning towards a rate cut. Yeah, if they don't cut rates in September, watch out in this market, man. That would be quite a repricing compared to where this market is across the board right now. But it'd be interesting to see, and it's happened before, as we know. Don't have to go too far back for the market to get ahead of where the Fed is. And like you said, you know, it's um, we got some pretty important data coming down the line. We get the jobs data coming out. They'll be watching that. There's always surprises that are possible. Um, but yeah, that would be quite a shock in terms of where the market is positioned, and we'll see where that goes. You got the ten-year. What do you think about the ten-year sitting at three point eight right now? I mean, I know it's you know we've had quite a pullback. The market is pricing in some of those cuts that that they're expecting. But what do you think? I mean, I just I I, I asked that with my own mentality, saying that's a pretty low ten-year with where the market is, with where some of the growth is in this you know AI growth-based. Um, technology-based economy. It's it's a pretty low cost of capital, all things considered, 3.8% when you have, you know, market at all-time highs. You got NVIDIA earnings after the bell today, of course. Um, what do you think about just kind of that 10-year? What's your take on a 3.8 right now with everything going on? Uh, I, I like it where, that the level where it's at. I, I don't think that now when we do start to see rate cuts, um, whether how severe they are or not, I don't think you're going to see as big of a move in the 30 year, I think you're going to see a more of an exacerbated move in the, or excuse me, I don't think you'll see as much of a move in the 10 year as you will in the 30 year. Um, your shorter end of the curve are leading the charge on this trend and, uh, and the fundamentals that are um, going in front of a potential rate cut. So I, I like the levels where it's at, but I'd be very careful um, as far as being along, looking for how high you can see this market go. Unless we have some really drastic you know, economic numbers or something that would really look at us saying, hey, the Fed could be doing like a point and a half over the next six months or something like that, which yeah. I think that would be – it would take something to be a really big shock to the system because otherwise it would really say the Fed was behind the ball, which, you know, that's we don't need to be Monday morning quarterbacking that. Now we're in the present. So let's see what happens in, uh, then over the next couple of weeks. And once again, I, I would say watch the economic indicators because if they reverse gears off of the, the, the month in and month out trend, we're going to probably see, you know, the opposite of the trend that they're trying to put in place right now. Can you hang with us to talk a little bit of crude after the break? Sure. Okay. All right. We'll come back with Teddy, folks. We'll talk a little bit of crude. We'll wrap up the program. You got crude right now down 80 pennies trading at 74.71. We'll touch on gold as well. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Teddy. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down by five right now. We take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA down about 1.5%, down $2. We await their earnings after the bell. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Don't forget, folks, to check out the Tiger Forex report and a couple of great webinars under the services tab. Teddy's got it as well. And yes, what do you think about the price of crude, Teddy? Still with a 74 handle, a little bit of volatility this week, up to a high of 77.60, but all things considered, pretty cheap oil right now at 74.65. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take let's just talk about the numbers. Uh, the low that was set last week was the lowest intraday low we've seen since April. Um, but of the two other pre previous lows, it wasn't very much lower. <laughs> uh, we sure. had a nice bounce uh, and we rallied into our critical resistance band from the Tiger Forex report on Monday. The market stalled and we've had a nice correction over the past two days. Now, interestingly enough, from the high of Monday to the low of today, you have pretty much an um, exact Fibonacci retracement of uh, 0.618. So I would nice. use today's low and the high of Monday as your critical pivots for the rest of the week. Should we take out the high? Then I think we're going to be pressing up against that 78.15, which is the upper band of our critical resistance band. If we can get a move above there, then I think we have a good shot at shooting up towards 80. 80 is a critical level. If we close above that, then we have it. We're going to be pushing the upper end of the range over the next couple of weeks, I would think. If we take out the low from today, not necessarily today, but if we don't take out the high from Monday, but let's say tomorrow or Friday, we, we slip below the low of today, that would be a pretty good indication that the market wants to at least kind of tread along the lows from last week. Are we going to take it out? Probably not. Um, but I think that you will see the market kind of 
running along those lines somewhere in that 71 to 74 area for a little bit perhaps i would like that i think everyone else would like that um, right. but be careful but be careful of uh those levels i would say you know if you're <clears throat> if you're short against uh monday's high you should have your stops pretty tight above there I'm, i don't think that would be being a weak short by any means um sure. and as far as trying to uh you know, trade the other way too. You know, I'd be very cautious as far as trying to see a big sell off. You know, you're kind of right now, probably in the middle of a range right now. So be careful with that. Great take, man. I appreciate it as always. I put that Fibonacci up there as you were talking about it, right at that 618. Gotta love it, man. Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, okay? Have a great Labor Day, man. You too. Be safe. Thanks so much.